Yes, I am back everyone. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 1 of Javier in the Air. Uh, I'm really excited to be back. I'm refreshed. I am revigorated. So hopefully uh, we have some exciting new episodes for everyone. Uh, I'll get some new people to watch it. Maybe I'll get a sponsor this year. Maybe not. Who knows the way things are going. Everything's up in the air right now, right? Uh, we got the Omicron still hitting. We got craziness going on in, in the world and in other areas that I don't talk about on the show. And so um, I hope everybody had a good end of the year. I hope everybody's having a good New Year so far. We're nine days into January, so hopefully everyone's um, excited and, and well-rested as well and has enjoyed their time off. But now we need to get to it. Now to get some work done. So, Season 3. What uh, I kind of made a le allusion to it uh, at the end of 2022. I'm sorry, 2021. See, I'm already into 2022. I'm totally forgetting 2021. That's how bad 2021 was. So, um, at the end of 2021, uh, some friends of mine, uh, and they've been on the show before, the Takashitas, uh, asked me if I would be interested in going to a park, a state park during our time off. Now, this is a state park that I have always wanted to go to. It had been on my bucket list. Um, I thought I would find my weight in uh, this mineral, which we didn't, but it was fun nonetheless. So what I'm talking about is Crater of Diamonds State Park in Mufreesboro, Arkansas. So we managed to uh, pull it all together and we drove out there, which is about a seven hour drive from Austin Cedar Park to uh, Mufreesboro, Arkansas. So it was a great drive. We had a great time. Nobody died. So that's always a good sign of, a, of an adventure, especially if you haven't gone on a long trip with, with people before. And uh, we enjoyed ourselves, played a lot of cards, uh, dug for diamonds, and then also enjoyed ourselves in other places as well. So um, this episode is kind of about that. I have a little special something that I didn't get onto in 2021. This is something I started a tradition of doing, so I'm going to show that first. This would be the second year that I did it on Christmas Eve. And then we're going to go right into the Crater of Diamonds. I have a couple of videos of, of me and us out there, uh, some of what we went through. I'll talk a little bit about it afterward. Then we have a really great Zen moment that ties into the park as well. I think it's great because it's got me in it. Um, and then uh, we will talk a little bit more about some of the thoughts, some of the upcoming things that I want to do on the show. And then we'll have our alcoholic moment. I shouldn't call it alcoholic. That already sounds bad. Let's call it our... Well, I usually call it the beer moment, but I've been incorporating a lot of other ones into it. So if you think of a new name for that area, let me know and I'll certainly uh, go that. So this year, this is a year of changes and first and so uh, let's see what we can do so let's go ahead and take a look at my time at the crater of diamonds state park in mufreesboro arkansas here we go so we made it crater of diamonds state park uh it's beginning to rain so i don't know if we're gonna actually dig today but we'll figure it out so anyway we'll see how it goes so here we are, there's the visitor center, Crater of Diamonds, Mufreesboro, Arkansas, Crater of Diamonds State Park. Been uh, on my bucket list for probably 10 to 15 years once I found out about it. Just to get out here, our plan is to get the biggest diamond ever. Uh, the reality is we'll probably get something. So. Wish us luck. Here we are. Hey everybody, out here. Hey, out here taking a break, sitting in the rain. Uh, hopefully, it'll line up in a minute. I can get out there and maybe film a new opening scene for the podcast. So, uh, so far, we think we found uh, a bunch of quartz and some really, really cool river rocks. 
So uh, we'll get the identification center to uh, let us know what, uh, how much garbage we actually found. So uh, we'll see. So, well, we made it. Uh, about uh, seven hours, we were out there. <clears throat> Didn't really find anything. Uh, was optimistic that we would, but I knew we probably wouldn't. Uh, but it was worth it. It was great. I enjoyed it and I made it on from my bucket list So it's gonna be a memory that will stay with me forever So will I come back? Maybe if I can get other people interested in it, we'll do it. All right ladies Okay, so there it was the before during and after of my bucket list item digging in the crater of Di uh, Crater Diamond State Park in Murfreesboro, Arkansas. So, for those of you who may not know, uh, this is an open-faced, uh, basically, area, a crater. I mean, they call it a crater, but it, crater implies, to me, crater implies that a meteor or an asteroid, or an asteroid came, became a meteor, and slammed into the Earth. That is not the case, which I found out. So I was telling everybody that, but that's not the case. So, what this was is millions of years ago, a volcano erupted, and um, they believed that there was some crusting going on or something, and it was kind of partially underground, so it blew everything out to form this crater as it erupted. So, flat, fast forward to about the somewhere in the 1900s, I think it was. Um, early 1900s maybe late 1800s I don't remember exactly it was discovered by a family who owned the property and they had uh, found some diamonds on there so um, and then uh, kind of played out like they got some diamonds but they it wasn't it wasn't lucrative uh, of course it wasn't like you know size size of a baby's head diamond every 15 feet no so um, the property had changed hands a couple times and I believe prior to it becoming a state park they were allowing some people to come and uh, dig for diamonds so um, I don't remember the, the year but I think it was in the 40s or something it became an actual state park and now visitors can come from all over the world come to explore and dig for their possibility of getting diamonds so again it's an open field you saw where I was standing maybe about two football fields wide maybe about a football field and about a football field I'm sorry two football fields long and about a football field wide um, so if you can imagine that with furrows because they dig up the soil every now and then and kind of just dump it do like a flip and dump flip and dump type of thing so uh we got out there and we got out there on a wednesday and it went uh prediction was 80 percent rain i think 90 at one point then it went down to 80 um so we went out there a bunch with a bunch of other crazy people that were out there there were probably a couple hundred people out there all together and we dug and picked up five gallon buckets full of mostly mud and clay yeah um, to try to sift through it to see if we can find our fortune so um, unfortunately we didn't find anything uh, we found some quartz and some uh, what was a tiger or, or tiger sandstone and some other maybe feldspur I don't remember I didn't I didn't keep any of them <laughs> Uh, but James and Julia did, so uh, that was nice of them. Uh, and you saw Julia there in one of the videos. So um, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm moving this table and it's making the camera shake. So I apologize for that. Um, so what you can do for ten dollars and then rental fee of the equipment. This is where they make their money. So um, you know twenty dollars for the equipment. You can fill up your buckets uh, with. This material, which you're thinking is maybe potentially diamonds in, in in there, take it to a sluice. Not really a sluice because it's it's stationary, but it's just these water troughs, um, and then you can sift for diamonds. 
So the way you sift for diamonds is you have two, uh, let me put this down, you have two um, screens, basically, uh, probably about 8 by 12, 8 by 14 uh, screens. One of them much bigger uh, as far as the screen size is concerned, the other one much finer. So you have the bigger one on top of the finer one. And then you start sloughing this clay soil material and basically you're shaking it shaking and shaking it to sift out the mud and the dirt which is you're in the water while you're doing this so it was probably I want to say 60 65 degrees 100% uh, raining for most of the time we were out there uh, so it wasn't that cold so it was it was it was okay and I usually have problems with my my fingers and my toes but uh, it, it was fine I was out there seven hours didn't have a problem anyway and we were wet most of the time too so you're shaking the screens you're shaking the screens for er all of the non mineral stuff to, to wash away in the water and then what you do is you take the uh, larger screen and you kind of make sure all that is gone everything that's gone that will fall through and then you search through those larger rocks to see if one they're mud and perhaps maybe they're something else uh, you know potentially a diamond which didn't happen but you want to look through that anyway so you look through that sift through it you see what it is if anything's good you take it to one side if not you just kind of throw it to the side uh, all around the area uh, people were just dumping stuff um, so then you get the finer screen and you go through and you start sh sifting it some more try to get rid of more of the mud that's in there or more of the clay until what you have left is basically a type of gravel now that's where you're supposed supposedly will be able to find diamonds now I want to make this clear sorry I want to make this clear to everyone one carat diamond is about the size of a pencil eraser head okay so I want to make that clear a pencil eraser head so if you have a pencil I know it's rare these days that people do but find a pencil find the eraser and look at that tip eraser that burnt orange dark reddish orange uh, eraser that not the and not the pointy one just that flat little nubbin that you get with <coughs> excuse me with pencils so that is one carat that is the equivalent of one carat what they said you will normally find here now you can find some and there were some uh, up to a couple of weeks ago that found uh, like a half a carat so half of that pencil eraser what you will normally find these days normally on average is 0.1 of a carat so one tenth the size of that eraser is what has normally been found um, and the um, rangers told us that they find about um, one to two uh, one to two a day of that size like point one or less of a carrot so once again this is not something where you're gonna find your your weight in diamonds or you're gonna quit your job and you're gonna become a diamond hunter so that's not how it works but we had a great time we had fun we were not uh, I wasn't planning on doing it so it, it turned out to be a great adventure I got it off my bucket list um, like I said in the last video would I go again maybe if I had some uh, other people that were interested or if James and Julia were interested again I'd probably go again just for fun um, I might have a better idea of what I'm looking for now but um, it's not high on my list of like things I want to do this year now I may want to go and find some of the other parks that you can look for dime, uh, emeralds and pan for gold and stuff like that. That may be interesting to me, so we'll have to see if that comes to fruition or not. Okay, so while we were out there, we actually got to a casino, um, and I'll have to see. I'll have to look up and see where that casino is. But I wanted to show you uh, what we some of the things that we did when we were out there. So. 
Um, here are some shots of the casino. I'll do a voiceover real quick of, of what we did out there. So uh, here we go. Okay, so this is the uh, Oaklawn Casino in Arkansas. So you really can't see much because I didn't want to overdo it. Um, and, you know, it wasn't a lot of people there anyway. This was a Thursday, so you don't expect to see a lot of people. So we were able to, uh, I believe James and Julie were able to play some uh, slots, and I was able to play some three-card poker and also some blackjack, and we all had good fun out there. Uh, nothing real crazy. Um, they had just finally instituted a mask mandate again, and so some of the... Um, uh, dealers were grumbling about it, but uh, you know it turned out to be really good. So it turned out to be a fun time. Let's go. All right, so we're here at the uh, Oak Lawn Resort and Casino in uh, Arkansas. I don't remember what little city, and we're just here. Uh, I already lost my daily allotment of money, so we're gonna head on back. We got one more night here uh, in Arkansas, and then we're heading back home. So we'll see everybody when we get back home. Yes, I lost my allotment quite early on, but actually I, I wound up, I, I had money in different pockets, so I wound up actually not doing as bad as I thought. So I only lost $60, which was not my allotment for the day, but we had already left by the time I figured that out. So uh, before we go, uh, but it was, it was good. So, um, and we drove back and we had a great time. And for those of you who may still want to come out here or may go out there to Murfreesboro, Arkansas, I want to let you know, it's a dry county, so if you're interested in drinking, bring your own nuff set. Okay, before we go into the Zen moment, I forgot that I, we found this great little Mexican restaurant. And it was probably the, it was the only game in town. So I'm sure it was like the number one restaurant in Murfreesboro. But it was really nice, and it had a really touristy look to it. It kind of reminded me of of um the candy store that my grandparents owned el quetzal uh vibrant colors um and everything and it kind of reminded me of the market square in san antonio uh which is on commerce and and if you haven't been you need to go but it kind of reminded me and and you'll see why so i'm going to um just do a real quick uh shot of Talingas. Talingas mexican restaurant in murfreesboro arkansas that's Talingas. Uh, in fact, I have the card right here. One second. So this is the Traveler's Choice 2021 uh, Talingas Mexican Restaurant in Murfreesboro. So let me see if I can get this. Um, there you go. Talingas Mexican Restaurant in Murfreesboro. Um, and I have to say I was cheating while I was there uh, food-wise, but they had fantastic sopapillas fantastic sopapilla so uh, if you get a chance to go to Crater Diamond State Park in Murfreesboro be sure and go into Terlingas you can even order the um, I think it was Tacos Javier is what it was called and I was like yeah so um, check, check it out before, and then we're gonna go straight into the Zen moment but uh, I, I wanted you to see this because it was really great and welcome to Terlingas Mexican restaurant in Murfreesboro Arkansas great place um, if you notice um, the bright colors and here are ceramics it comes to find out that Talingas actually owns a ceramic store in downtown Murfreesboro so this is probably where they show off their wares uh, and this was a one chicken one cheese one beef one bean enchilada plate uh, that turned out to be fantastic and then finally here is a uh, some of the artwork that they have on the walls and you notice the bright pink and then bright yellow of the of the walls itself it, it was a really cool place walking 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 thoughts all to himself wondering about the day wondering about his life walking 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 Slowly through the dirt and clay. Will I get through this mud, he thinks? Will I get through the day?
walking, 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 one step slowly at the time, one slow step, one slow step in his head like a rhyme. Walking, 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 and at the end how brave, with the silly grin, with the silly wave. So there you have it, uh, our zen moment for this episode. So yes, that was me um, trudging through there. So what you couldn't tell on that video is that it was raining, not supremely hard, but it was raining, and it had rained for a couple of hours already prior to this walk. So uh, that led to the poem by Jay, Ma Jay Anderson, which led to, as you can tell, I'm vicariously oh, 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 walking the entire time. Now, I was wearing tennis shoes. I should have worn boots, but I didn't find any boots that I liked that I, that I could get a hold of. Uh, they were too hard to get into, and so I didn't want to deal with that. It was a mess. So I'm wearing tennis shoes, but I'm walking on wet seriously wet clay so uh hence led to the poem which led to the zen moment so anyway uh i almost forgot but uh before we get to the beer i wanted to show you um what i did on christmas eve uh it's two years now that i've done it i hope to continue to do it and so uh, let's take a look real quick and then we'll get back to the to the beer or alcohol so I did it last year, I'm going to do it again this year, and now for my walk, waving at anybody and everybody that goes by, happy Christmas Eve. And here we are, coming to the end of the first episode of season three. Ah, I keep hitting that table, I'll fix it for next time, I won't be using this table again or I'll make sure it's balanced. So. There was my Christmas Eve uh, tradition. By the way, I also walk around with some uh, candy canes in my pocket. And I actually ran across a neighbor and her daughter and gave out one of the candy canes. So if you happen to see me on Christmas Eve, uh, be sure and say hello. I'm part of the um, uh, assistance to uh, Santa. Uh, I make sure that the houses are correct. Uh, it's a new tradition I started. Uh, Santa asked me to help out. Um, and so my name is actually uh, a Little Puppet Claus and so I'm Little Puppet Claus right there um, so if you see me next December 24th I'll be out walking the neighborhood if you come up and say hello I'll give you a candy cane and make sure that your house has been um, documented correctly uh, for the big gay so okay so uh, we got we got through this episode now what's left is what I um, I'm not sure what we're going to call it yet. Uh, spirit time, uh, alcohols are us, something that's going to flavor it up. So if you have an idea, be sure and uh, send me a note. But um, my name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. That's right. We're going for 903 Brewers Ozymandias, Ozymandias which is a barley wine style ale. 11.4% ABV for those of you out there. Now, um, Brother Rob does not like um, barley wine, but 11.4 may get you, may get, may get you, Rob. I don't know. Um, so uh, this is one pint, uh, 903 Brewers out of Sherman, Texas. Uh, what I like about this is, well, a couple of things. So um, here's the can. Let me... Go back and get that for you. Oops, I'm out of the picture. Barley wine, BA as, a, as an element there, and WI is a well element as well. Um, barley wine style ale. It's got a cool, uh, let me turn that right. Cool moon on the side as well, showing it looks like parts of uh, West Texas. And what it says here, it pairs well with uh, walnut crusted pork and thermodynamic miracles so that's 
that's another reason why uh, I thought I'd choose this for today. So I'm gonna I'm gonna open her up. I'm gonna put down the mic, and I'm gonna open her up and see what we get. Now this is a pint, so uh, I will be drinking uh, for quite some time after the show. Um, and so let's see. Here's I got my my glass. Maybe you can hear it. See if I can get the whole pint in here. I cannot. There's just a little bit left. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show it to the camera. Camera. Here here you go. It's really hard to tell, but it's a dark. In the camera, it looks chocolatey. But if you look at it, I'm looking at it non-camera wise. And it's a nice rustic red reddish brown type of thing it's very interesting it's not just that brown that you're seeing in the camera i don't know why the camera is uh, dulling it uh for me today or has been dulling it but it's a really interesting color um if you're not viewing that in the camera so for those of you that are watching it in this camera i apologize it's a much better color to it uh, has that has that nice barley wine smell to it so uh, this is gonna be good so let's see what we get I'm a little disappointed on, on that taste uh, the smell is fantastic it's a, um, a real nice floral smell to it but then the taste Um, is more bitter floral than I would expect. Um, a little bit more on the bitter taste than I was expecting. Um, I've had some other barley wines before. This is the first time I've had 903, so this could be exactly what they're going for. So, uh, you guys out at 903, I'm not knocking you. This is my first time trying it. Uh, if you think maybe I got a bad one or you like to, um, judge, you know, have me judge again, by all means, you're certainly welcome to send me out any and all of your uh, the brewery line, and I will taste them one by one and judge them accordingly. So as you can see, I'm trying a couple of, um, couple of times. I don't want to just be one and done and be like, this is disgusting, which I don't find it disgusting, but I don't want to be that guy that just does one and, and tries to incorporate all the senses and taste according to one sip so uh here we go again by the way this is the first uh taste tasting of season three episode one this is the very first tasting of the year so i want to thank extra special thanks to 903 brewers out of sherman texas for uh having beers like this and i want once again i want to thank the people out at brutique scott and Jana. For being out there this is where i got it from and uh, i always enjoy going out there talking to scott and jenna catching up with old times and catching up on some of those fantastic beers i'll be going out there again maybe uh, next weekend we'll see how it goes anyway one more time before i make a judging i have to say by the this fifth one the uh, some of the bitterness has worn off i don't know if maybe that was just the first uh, taste and it's a little bit of more oxidation going on or something like that but one more how do I do one more just just go on. yeah it's 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 better than the first the first sip um, uh, what I come to expect to have, of barley wines which is good I, I'm not a huge fan of them but I'm not not a fan like um, brother Rob is so um, there's not heavy on the alcohol like I said it's a floral smell it's a floral taste to it a little bit more on the bitter side than I was expecting um, but it got better as I case I don't know if maybe just my taste buds were um, you know I still just had lunch and maybe that was that was um, coloring it um, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a uh, member for those of you this first time watching welcome but also we go from 1 to 10 I think that was 10. 10 thumbs up. So I'm going to give this six thumbs up. 
um, good. I would say probably like I, I think it would go well with a walnut crusted pork, which I've had before. I think this would pa pair very well with it. Now, as far as thermodynamic miracles, I don't know if that would be. Um, I haven't haven't had one, so uh, we'll see. So uh, thanks again for uh, the barley wine for 903 Brewers in Sherman, Texas. Also want to thank um, Crater of Diamond State Park, Murfreesboro, for being open over the holidays so that my friends and I could go and try to find our fortune, which we did not. It's still a fun time. So if you're looking for something for, uh, for your family to do, especially over during uh, COVID-like times, um, everybody pretty much kept to themselves. Uh, if you were with the group, you stayed in that group. You dug with that group and then you found or didn't find anything with that group. So uh, plenty of space. Um, there was nothing indoors that we did. So there was no worrying about masking up or anything. Arkansas does not mask as much as some other states. They're kind of equal with with Texas. And like I said, at the casino, they were beginning to uh, enforce for their dealers to mask, which they weren't happy about, but they masked. Uh, because I was told if they didn't wear their mask, they were asked to go home. Um, which makes sense. They can't, uh, you know, you don't want to have 60, 70% of your uh, crew out because one person refused to wear their mask. That's all there is to it, uh, especially if you're not vaccinated. Now, uh, one lady I talked to was vaccinated, so that was great. So <clears throat> if you own a small business or are uh, a writer, uh, an author of any sort, um, you know somebody that has a small business or you have a passion for something, arts and crafts, um, projects that you work on that you, maybe you sell at the Be The Light Craft Fair that has been on the show before. Um, give, me a, give me a shout. Uh, let's, t let's talk and see if I can get you on here, interview you, talk about what you're passionate about. If your passion is your business, then let's talk about your business. Um, I am fully vaccinated with the booster, pew, pew, so I am uh, ready to go out and interview and talk to whoever. If you are still feeling uncomfortable about uh, the situation that's going on right now, I can certainly join you on Zoom. You don't have to be in the Cedar Park area. If you live outside of Cedar Park, outside of the outside of Texas, then by all means, just reach out and we can t have a talk and set up a time to interview you. So um, in the past, I've gone everywhere from A to Z. We've gone from, you know, uh, talking to my neighbors and and and. Uh, James, neighbor James, who is an author. Um, we've gone from talking to Bubble Theory uh, with uh, Gomer. We've talked about gaming. We've talked about cards. We've talked about um, uh, a salon. We talked about a tamalata uh, with Zyda's fantastic tamalata, which is still my number one watched uh, YouTube podcast uh, with her going through the whole start to finish of making tamales so uh anything and everything is fair game except for religion or politics uh those two there's enough podcasts about them that they don't need to be on my podcast so anything else you want to talk about uh sometimes i'm even looking for a, even having a guest host sometimes where we could just shoot the breeze and talk about you know modern topics or old topics history whatever and see what we get so <coughs> excuse me let's Let's just see what's out there and let's do it. So um, thank you for watching all these years now because this is season three. Thank you for starting season three with me. Uh, I hope to have more and better things for everyone. And I will see everybody next week. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks a lot.